So to test a bit of a different usage scenario for the GTX 590, I wanted to have a look at its performance in 3D Vision in a couple of 3D Vision ready games. So one of the ones that I picked was Batman Arkham Asylum. I'm running at 1920 by 1080, so that is 1080p, uh, 4x anti-aliasing, and all of the details are maxed out completely. Now, what I did discover about Batman Arkham Asylum as well as uh, one of the other games that I was running in 3D, uh, Hawks 2, was that it can pretty well run the game completely maxed out with absolutely no slowdowns whatsoever at 60 FPS. So you can see the fraps counter up in the top corner and um, pretty much no matter what I do in terms of gameplay it just stays tagged at 60 frames per second. So I haven't actually tested any of the other solutions yet but once I have a chance uh, hopefully I'll be able to show some kind of a difference in the performance. Now, I wish as much as the next guy that 3D Vision would support higher reses, but right now the biggest limiting factor is the displays, or rather the display interfaces, because DVI only supports up to 1920 by 1200 at 120 hertz, which is required for 3D Vision, or it supports 2560 by 1600 at 60 hertz. So we're pretty much stuck with 1080p as a maximum resolution. So I just wanted to discuss the requirements for 3D Vision before I get into my results. So first of all, you'll need the 3D Vision glasses, uh, either with the IR emitter or the wired version that is uh, just about to come out or uh, is already out, depending on when you're watching this video. You'll need a 3D Vision ready graphics card, so pretty much any GeForce 8800 series and up gaming grade graphics card is going to be okay for that. And then you'll also need a 3D Vision ready display. In this case I'm using an ASUS VG23, uh, VG236, but you can also even use uh, projectors. So if you actually sort of look over here, you know what, I could turn my uh, light on here and then we'd probably be getting better quality uh, video, but uh, you can also use a 3D Vision projector. So here I've got an Acer 3D Vision projector that I've been uh, tinkering around with in the last little bit. So uh, yeah, I'll be bringing some results to you. I'm only going to be comparing it against high-end solutions, so I'm going to be comparing it against a single GTX 580 as well as GTX 460s and SLI to see how they stack up. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the charts and graphs segment of our video today. Uh, so this is... I'm going to try to help you guys interpret the results as much as I can here because some of them might be a little bit confusing, like Batman, Arkham Asylum, and Hawks 2 both show our GTX 590 performing pretty much identically to GTX 580 SLI, but also pretty much identically to doo -doo -doo, let's see if I can find it GTX 560 SLI so why is that well the reason is that in 3D vision you're capped at a number of different frame rates so what it does is the driver takes the closest lowest frame rate that it that it takes the closest uh, fixed frame rate and it takes the highest possible one and then it, it, it stops it there. So basically if you're in a game like uh, Batman Arkham Asylum or Hawks 2 where it always can run higher than 60 FPS, it'll run at 60 FPS. And you're in a if you're in a game like Battlefield Bad Company 2 where you saw two of our results were around that 40 FPS mark, what that means is the game's probably running somewhere between 45 to 55 FPS but the nearest fixed frame rate is 40. So uh, they, the 60 and 40 are two of the ones that we do encounter. So that's why those results are so clustered. So Hawks 2 and Batman Arkham Asylum, basically what we learn is that those games are not limited in any way by these graphics card configurations at 1080p, fully maxed out, running 3D Vision. Now, Battlefield Bad Company 2, on the other hand, has kind of confusing results because you see that... Those are my hot cross buns, okay. You can clearly see that the GTX 580 SLI destroys the 590 by a margin 
that shouldn't be possible because GTX 580 SLI is faster than a 590, but not by that much. So the reason for that is again the same thing. So the GTX 580 SLI scores almost 60 frames per second, which means that it was probably running above 60 frames per second, but then capped at 60 frames per second for most of the, uh, the, the, uh, the segment of the game that I played through. Whereas the GTX 590 was just under that threshold where it couldn't run at 60 FPS most of the time, so it had to drop itself all the way down to 40, which means that you get a much leggier performance in that particular title. Now, I mean, I had everything pretty much maxed out. You can back off a couple details. Don't get me wrong, you'll get a very, very enjoyable 3D Vision gaming experience on the 590 in Bad Company 2. But that is why we saw the results that we did, and that's once again why the 590 was so close to our 560 result. Uh, Metro 2033 is the one, probably the only one where we actually see sensible scaling. So this game at very high quality with everything completely maxed out in game is probably too much for any of these solutions. So really, I find Metro 2033 doesn't look much different on high. The only reason I benchmark on very high is so that I can just say all maxed out because that's a little bit easier for people to uh, to try on their own rigs to compare against my results. So I guess that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to say about it. Thank you for checking out this little video on the 3D Vision performance of the GTX 590 from NVIDIA. Don't forget to subscribe for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.